A linear combination is the new vector that you obtain when you combine other vectors in a particular way. You can have a linear combination of two or more vectors. Linear combinations involve scalar multiplication and vector addition, two operations that you've already met. Let's see how to create a linear combination of two vectors. Here's a vector called u and a vector called v. u and v are two-dimensional vectors with real number components, so we refer to their vector space as r squared. By the way, bear in mind that this 10 by 10 grid is just a limited view of a much more expansive coordinate system that's been superimposed onto the vector space that we call r squared. This two-dimensional vector space actually extends infinitely in all directions of the xy plane. To calculate a linear combination of these two vectors, we must first multiply each by a scalar, that is, a number. These scalars could be the same or different values, and they can be as big or as small as you like. I've chosen 3 and 2 for no particular reason. The result is two scaled vectors. The scaled vectors are then added together to create a new vector, a linear combination of u and v. It's that simple. If we call the new vector w, then this particular linear combination can be expressed as w equals 3u plus 2v. The scalars in this equation, 3 and 2, are known as coefficients. Here's another example of a linear combination of two different vectors, a and b. This time, one of the original vectors, b, has negative components. Notice also that one of the scalars is not a whole number. We can, nevertheless, calculate a new linear combination of these two vectors. The new vector, which we'll call w again, can be described by the equation w equals 2a plus 2.5b. In this example, the coefficient being applied to vector d is less than 1, so d will be shortened rather than stretched. Notice also that the coefficient being applied to vector e is a negative number. In fact, because it's minus 1, it has the effect of simply reversing the direction of e. The linear combination of these two vectors is, nevertheless, just as easily calculated. We'll call it w again, for no particular reason. This linear combination of d and e can be written as 0.5d plus minus 1e, or more simply as 0.5d minus e. In general terms, a linear combination of two vectors can be written like this, where v1 and v2 are vectors, and s1 and s2 are scalar coefficients. It's also possible to create a linear combination of more than two two-dimensional vectors. This time, vectors f, g and h are being combined with the coefficients 2, 3 and 2. In general terms, we can therefore write this, where n is the number of vectors being combined. Furthermore, you can create linear combinations of two or more three-dimensional vectors. You've already seen how easy it is to scale a three-dimensional vector, and that adding together vectors with three dimensions is just as easy as adding together vectors with two. We'll restrict our discussion to vectors in two dimensions for the time being, because it's easier to visualise. By now, you may have already realised that there are an infinite number of possible values that can be used as coefficients in a linear combination of two vectors. It follows that by scaling either, or indeed both of these vectors, with suitable coefficients, then adding them together, you can create a new vector with any direction and any magnitude in this two-dimensional plane. Given that any new two-dimensional vector can be based upon these two, by combining them in the appropriate linear combination, these two vectors are said to form a basis 
for other vectors. All of the vectors that it's possible to create with linear combinations of these two are collectively referred to as the span of these two vectors. To put that another way, the span of these two vectors is the set that includes all of the vectors that could possibly exist in R squared. Almost any pair of vectors can form a basis for the creation of all the other vectors in R squared. It's just a matter of finding the appropriate linear combinations. But there are some exceptions. One of them is when two vectors are on the same line, that is, when they are collinear. In this case, it doesn't matter how much or how little you stretch and compress these vectors, you can only ever create new vectors that are also collinear with the pair that you're combining. Therefore, the span of a pair of collinear vectors is all of the vectors that exist on the same line. Two vectors that are collinear are said to be linearly dependent. This is because either one of them is essentially redundant. There's no new vector that you can create by scaling and adding these two that you couldn't have created by just scaling one of them. Two vectors that are not collinear are said to be linearly independent. Only a pair of linearly independent vectors can form a basis for this vector space. Another exception which might seem rather odd is when one of the vectors has coordinates 0, 0. In other words, when one of the vectors is the so-called zero vector. The zero vector is represented here with a dot at the origin because it has no magnitude and no direction. It doesn't matter how you try to scale a zero vector, the result will always be a zero vector. Therefore, when the zero vector participates in a linear combination with a non-zero vector, and strictly speaking it can, the linear combination is nothing more than a scaled version of the non-zero vector. The span of this particular linear combination is once again all of the vectors that exist on the same line. In a later video, you'll see that it's much more convenient to select a pair of orthogonal vectors, each with a magnitude of 1, as a basis for all of the other vectors that share the same space. Not least because calculating linear combinations of these is very easy to do indeed. In later videos, you'll also see that being able to calculate linear combinations of basis vectors is the foundation of animated computer graphics, quantum logic gates, and more.